In the face of national challenges, many area pharmacists offered their services to our country. In those, in those days, a pharmacist uh, work in a pharmacy in, in the service, you didn't have to be a registered pharmacist. That was the days you could just, you go, you, we went to, um, I went to uh, medic or uh, pharmacy technician school in Fort Sam Houston, Texas in 1949, the summer of 1949, I had a 16 week course of basic pharmacy, making solutions, making powders, making ointments, and you know, and learning how to read prescriptions, and uh, then then you then you had the medical. Now the pharmacy technician now is different. You know, they they they're coherent. They get a, they get a degree yeah. here. No, you know, not, a, not yeah. But anyway, so I got that that training down there, and then and then when I went over to Japan, uh, when I come come out of Korea, I worked in this pharmacy in the hospital, and making solutions. And, and making ointments and, and you know, filling prescriptions and it was like the only ones that were made up were like vitamin pills and things like that. So I took my chances with the army for two years and luckily for one year I, I, I worked in the pharmacy in, in Korea and uh, that was sort of crude. Uh, we used to have, we had to make our own aryomycin ointment even. We, we, we couldn't even buy it. Uh, uh, you know, you'd get the capsules and you'd weigh out <coughs> so much and, and mix it in with petrolatum and, and that was our aryomycin ointment at the time. We even had to make our own elixir terpenhydrate and codeine. Uh, of course, at that time it was known as GI gin. In the spring of 1972, Tropical Storm Agnes hovered over the eastern seaboard, dumping huge quantities of rain on the already saturated soil. As a result, the Susquehanna River left its banks and caused one of the worst natural disasters the nation had ever seen, displacing thousands of Wyoming Valley residents and causing enormous pressure on police, fire and health services professionals. Area pharmacists also found themselves called into action. Well, I was working at the Penn Plaza, Booksburg, then. And we had water up to almost to the ceiling in there. And my home was also done. And I, I worked for Ray and Derek then. And they were really great to me. They brought people in to clean that while I cleaned my house. So we had a place to live. And. This, in this house, it was up to the top of the fireplace there. And then the drugstore was completely ruined. Everything had to be incinerated, I think. During the flood, we kind of got relegated to the heights of Wilkes-Barre. <clears throat> and not having anything to do I decided, I heard on the radio that they were looking for pharmacist volunteers at the, at the airport where they had set up a uh, you know, station. And I met my friend who was pharmacist at Farview State Hospital. He was working there. So we had kind of, you know, teamed up together. And at one point, I was kind of off to the side, and he called me over, and he said, I want your nurses here from retreat because they don't have any medication. What are they talking about? I said, you know, the whole pharmacy full of medication. I said, yeah, but they can't get in it. And we, we, we arranged to have a chopper pick me up at the Wyoming Valley Mall. And I went down to retreat. I don't even know where it is. It's still there as a, uh, a prison now. It's down Route 11, uh, right before Shikshini. Okay. Went down by chopper down to retreat. Uh, actually, the chopper pilot flew over my house, which was filled with water, but, uh, and, and, and that was kind of interesting. And he said, now look, he says, you only have a few minutes. He says, because there's a big Chinook helicopter coming in here with supplies. He said, so get yourself in there and get yourself out of there. So I had to make sure 